I'm Ed Ribby, otherwise known as the Rabbit Atheist, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. You're free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like. Uh, the purpose of this channel is educational in regards to atheism, deconversion, Bible, theology, and various other things uh, involved with deconversion, uh, in particular deconversion from Christianity to some form of free thinking, deism, atheism, paganism, agnosticism, whatever. Um, today is a little bit of a rab of rambling, but before that I want to uh, get to some channel news. Uh, we hit 50 subscribers this week. And in fact, one uh, commenter, which I'll deal with on Friday, made a particular uh, bona fide about waiting until he was the 50th one. So uh, I'll have to talk about that on Friday. And I'll talk more about the and give some more accolades for that. Um, today, though, I want to talk about rabbit ramblings because we're heading into the Thanksgiving Day holiday here in the United States. Uh, in fact, I'm in a couple of hours, I'll be heading to a family dinner, but I wanted to get this video off and running. Uh, oh, sorry about no video on Monday because uh, I had my teeth work done on Monday and uh, spent a good chunk of the rest of the day with half my face not being able to be felt, and I didn't want to try to talk through all that. So uh, that's the reason why there was no video on Monday. Um, we're getting back to Thanksgiving and the Atheist. A lot of people would say, well, why would an atheist... Um, celebrate Thanksgiving. Isn't Thanksgiving inherently religious? And I would argue not necessarily so. I mean, I know that the holiday was originally created as a way to give Thanksgiving to God for all the blessings that the country had, but this was done in a time when we were far more ignorant of a lot of things than we are today. So looking at um, this world, looking at things that are going forward, People ask me, why would an atheist therefore uh, celebrate, you know, Thanksgiving? Well, first of all, you know, the question I suppose is who do we give Thanksgiving to and what do we give Thanksgiving for? Well, first of all, I think as an atheist, I have a better grasp on who to be thankful for because um, I'm thankful to people who actually exist, people who are actually in my life or have surrounded my life or uh, dealt with things in my life that actually have helped me. Um, I don't know, this week has been just dotted with people on my Facebook asking for prayer requests and people were praying and everybody's thankful for those prayers. And it's like, you know, I'm looking at these prayer requests and, you know, God's apparently one out of five um, because a lot of them didn't go as originally intended. Um, very few did, actually. And that's kind of the way prayer requests actually go. I, I could do a, a whole montage on stuff of how prayer doesn't work, um, but and often creates the opposite result of what you're looking for. So. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, well, you know, I've got, of course, my Christian Facebook friends going, you know, 26 days of Thanksgiving and all this other stuff. And for me, I try to be thankful for people who actually do something. Uh, when it comes to disease, uh, you know, I'm going to be thankful to doctors, nurses, immunologists, you know, people who actually study disease study sickness and actually do something about it. Actually, you know, I think one of the great tragedies of our society is you'll go into a surgery, you know, the surgeon stands over you for, you know, hours and hours and hours, you know, fixes you and the person comes out and says, oh, thank God I came through that all right. Uh, you might be wanting to thank the surgeon because he's the one that did the work. And I think it's this notion of Thanksgiving that's bad, because there's a lot of things to be thankful for. It's just a question of who you're going to be thankful to. Um, so in my own list of who and what to be thankful for, I am, first of all, thankful to my family um, for putting up with me. I know that my transition from being a pastor to a non-believer has been difficult for a lot of them, but most of them have come through like champions and they respect the fact that I've changed. They don't like it, but they respect it. 
other times it can be difficult and it can be a difficult issue, um, particularly regarding other relationships like friendships. Uh, but along that lines, I am thankful uh, to a couple of friends who have stuck by me, but most notably my good friend in Texas, Jeff Ide. I want to give a shout out to him and I'm thankful for him because he has been there through the hard times and didn't turn his back on me when I was making a lot of bad, bad decisions and mistakes, uh, showing a, a true level of friendship. So thank you, sir. Um, to other people like my family, uh, my sons, my daughter, my wife, uh, thanks. You know, I know this hasn't been easy for you guys either. Uh, for some of you, others of you have taken it in stride, and that's awesome. Um, I'm also thankful for my fellow patriots that fight for liberty. Um, I know it's not always easy for us. Uh, I think it was Jim Carrey on um, Penn Gillette's radio show that they were asking about elections and libertarians. And he says, you know, when you're a Republican, you get sad when the Democrats win. And when you're a Democrat, you get sad when the Republicans win. When you're a libertarian, you get sad when anybody wins. And that's kind of the truth of it. Uh, very few people actually have considered what it means to be self-reliant, independent, and what liberty means and all of that, and how it's benefited us from a survival standpoint. So um, everybody wants to think that control and manipulation are better forces for survival. If that's the case, that religion has a, a pretty good leg up and politics too. So I'm thankful for people that stand up for true freedom. Um, I'm also thankful to the scientific community right now. I know it's not a popular thing to say, but, you know, because uh, the media has definitely fear-mongered COVID-19 quite a bit, but we're going to have to start being thankful to people who have actually created the vaccines and who look promising and who are going to help us not only overcome this disease, but actually kind of return to normal because then the politicians won't have any reason to gripe about how we need to do this, this, and this when we're all immune. And it won't be because of God that we're immune. It won't be because of faith that we're immune. In fact, quite the contrary. I, it seems to me that every time I turn on the TV, some anti-vaxxer who's a big proponent of faith, who's believing in some sort of faith healing or whatever, and I'm like, you know, if, if faith healing worked, why do we have COVID-19 in the first place? Uh, it seems like these faith healers would be at the hospitals praying for everybody and watching them get out of the bed. Um, but, you know, faith healers don't go to hospitals for the same reason, you know, astrologists don't uh, win the lotto. So there you have that. So I'm thankful for the medical community and the scientific community that's been working on this problem. Um, you guys are doing great. Uh, I know you don't always get the credit for the progress because the politicians always want to rob you of progress. Politicians can't seize power if there's not a crisis. And uh, they're milking this one for all they're, they're worth, that's for sure. But uh, thank you for doing the actual science work that's leading to some great results. And, you know, to me, the vaccines and things like that are, are going to be great. Um, and uh, I know a lot of other people don't like it. Um, you know, as a libertarian, I don't think anybody should be forced to be vaccinated. But I'm going to tell you, I think a lot of people are going to look at anti-vaxxers and go, huh. And we don't need 100% of the people in the world to get vaccinated. You know, you use vaccines to achieve herd immunity, you know, through vaccination either one way or another. So it's like, yeah, okay, let's have everybody get vaccinated. And then about 60, 70% of us, the virus hits somebody that's already vaccinated and it dies and it just eventually fades out because it just has nowhere to go. Um, so that's kind of way, the way we're going to beat that. And that's not due to God. That's due to scientists and medical community doing a great job. And even now without a vaccine, you know, the death rate has dropped because of medical professionals. So thank you. Um, what else am I thankful for? I'm thankful to be an atheist. It is amazingly freeing to not have your mind dominated by fear of something that's imaginary. It's amazingly freeing how much when you don't have to worry about this religion stuff, how much time you have how much energy you have, how much you're not. You're looking at relationships in a little bit different way. People ask me, 
you know, this is giving you kind of a clear view. Yeah, because I'm looking for friendships that are more based on dealing with real world problems and dealing with um, issues of loyalty and standing by one another in the tough times. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty sad thing. I mean, the, people ask me, you know, what do I think about, you know, some of the measures that the government has taken about COVID. My biggest problem with them is they're so contrary to humanity. That's the problem. <laughs> um, you know, psychologically speaking, we don't trust people whose faces we can't see. So masks become a problematic from a trust standpoint. That's why I think a lot of people have problems wearing them because they can't see the other person's face and that automatically creates distrust, even though wearing a mask may very well be helpful. Um, so, but they, they have this psychological thing. If you can't see somebody's face, you can't trust them. You know, masks are for robbers, so to speak, and bandits. Uh, and that's probably been conditioned to us, you know, people don't want to show their face. Uh, social distancing is problematic too, because, you know, how many millennia have we been as a human race? You know, you stand back to back spears out, you know, to protect yourself against, you know, enemies. Well, now we're facing an enemy that that actually hurts us, you know, because we're banded together, we end up spreading the enemy amongst ourselves. And so it's these two things that I think are contrary to human survival psychology, which is why people resist them so much and why it always breaks down at some point. And I think, you know, if if people who are leaders want to understand that, I think that's something that, you know, you need to, to deal with, too. There's, a, you know, the problem with this issue is not mass or no mass. It's not social distancing or no social distancing. It's there are other problems that kill us also as well. And you got to keep your eye on all that too. And look, a leader who can see the new threat, but also keep his eye on the bigger picture is a good leader. Um, and that's why I think some people that have been a little bit more moderate in this stuff have uh, done better uh, because they realize, hey, you know, if you shut down the medical community to deal with one disease, a lot of other people are going to die. You know, and that's kind of bore itself. So, you know, they're going to die of other things. Um, you know, you send COVID patients to nursing homes. That's probably a bad idea, a real bad one. You need to listen to the medical community that's saying, hey, you know, it's not a good idea. Um, you know, it's just all these things where you, if you can see the bigger picture and still go forward, that's pretty cool. And I'm thankful for the people that can see the bigger picture that don't get so myopically focused that they forget there's other things out there that are threats to humanity. I mean, it's not like the universe is a friendly place. You know, you're spinning around in a blue dot going through a universe where 99.99% of it would kill you instantly. You know, so, you know, the fact that we're alive and having this discussion is, is pretty something to be thankful for, too. But not to a god, mostly to just this is the way it is. And uh, so every day is a good day. Um, I don't know. I'm thankful for opportunities. But most of those, I've come from my own efforts. Um, I'm thankful for the education I received and worked hard to get. Um, I'm thankful for this channel uh, as an outlet for a voice that I've long missed. I'm thankful for all you subscribers have decided that some, for some reason, I'm worth listening to at least once or twice a week. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I don't know. Um, there's just a lot to be thankful for that doesn't have really anything to do with God, but my own efforts. And I think maybe I'm thankful for the, the mind change where I am deep converting enough to a point where I can also say I'm thankful for myself because I'm starting to realize how important I am in changing me. And I appreciate that, uh, that opening up of my own consciousness. Um, but once again, I'm being thankful to a real person, myself. It's amazing to me how religion makes you want to deny yourself so much, why you want to um, think that you are the problem and you're not the problem, you're the solution. And that's a revelation that I'm very thankful for. Um, that's an epiphany that I'm very thankful for. So uh, I'm thankful for all that. 
Um, you know, I don't know. But there's not much more to say other than, you know, make sure this Thanksgiving holiday as an atheist, you're being thankful to people who actually exist and you're being thankful for things that actually exist. I think that gives you an advantage uh, as an atheist during the Thanksgiving holiday because you're actually going to be thanking people and be thankful for things that are real instead of imaginary. And that probably is the best way to look at it from an atheist and Thanksgiving standpoint. I want to thank you for all stopping by. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to uh, a former old preacher who's to become a little bit of a different advocate for a different uh, you know, ideology. Thank you. Uh, and hopefully someday I can convince you to be a rabid atheist like myself. In the meantime, this is Ed Raby, also known as the Rabbit Atheist, signing off and wishing you a happy Thanksgiving.